Welcome back to Harmonize Your Life podcast with your host, Dr. Tony G. Alvarado. I'm glad to have you back with us again this week as we wrap up the month of October, which has been an exciting month of discussions around uh, breast cancer awareness. And we've had some wonderful, inspiring testimonies of women who have survived breast cancer. It's also been a month that we have recognized and brought awareness to and education to intimate partner violence, domestic violence awareness. And so I hope that you have been blessed by what you have heard this month already. We have another dynamic speaker and uh, a discussion that we're going to have today with a dynamic woman who I believe you're going to grow. Uh, You'll be edified by and you're going to learn a lot. You'll be inspired. And I know you're going to enjoy this show. Well, welcome back again. I am so glad to have with us in the studio today, Dr. April L. Spencer. She is our guest on the Harmonize Your Life podcast. Dr. Spencer is the founder and chief operating surgeon of Dr. Spencer's Global Breast Health and Wellness Center. She is a board certified general surgeon and completed a breast surgery fellowship at um, uh, Maryland Anderson Cancer Center. Um, As a breast surgical expert, she provides 100% breast surgical services to women, men, and adolescents. Did I say Maryland Anderson right? That wasn't right. That was MD Anderson, right? Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. Uh-huh. Okay. I want to make sure I got that right. Okay. So I am glad. Will y'all help me welcome uh, to our uh, podcast studio today, uh, Dr. April Spencer. She is going to be our guest today. And I know that we're going to have a dynamic discussion around breast health, around um, uh, what we need to do to take care of ourselves. And I want to say thank you for coming on the show today, Dr. Spencer, and congratulations on the award that you just received from um, from BET on your work in breast surgery. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being such an advocate for breast health in our community and the work that you are doing. Welcome to the Harmonize Your Life podcast. Oh, thanks for having me, Dr. Tony G. Alvarado. It's an absolute pleasure. I've been looking forward to this all month. So we can chat. I'm just glad that you were willing to have a conversation about the topic. And um, and so I'm hoping your guests will not only learn, but be inspired and be empowered to lower the risk for breast cancer. Yeah. So um, um, we, you know, this is the month of October and, you know, you know, more than most, that this month is a month that's dedicated to breast uh, cancer awareness and um, breast health. And you are certainly one that's leading in this field. You came highly recommended by two of my colleagues and friends, um, Dr. Uh, Shauna Woodruff and Dr. Um, Dr. Cheryl Vicks Crawford who is my sorority sister, my soror, and she also spoke highly of you. And so I knew everybody kept saying, you got to get Dr. Spencer on the podcast. You so, oh, I got to find her and I, not, I need to get her. And then, of course, you know, with Google, we can find anybody. And so I went out there and found you on the Internet, and looked you up and followed some of the work that you are doing. And I was like, oh, yeah, she is definitely coming on this podcast. I didn't know if I could get you this month, but I knew I was going to have to get you sooner or later. And I'm so glad that your schedule uh, allowed you to be with us on today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You did such amazing work and wrote some of the most um, critical topics in our community. So I had to make time for this. Well, good. I'm glad our topic today is on self-care and breast health. And so um, this is this podcast is a lifestyle podcast. Um, I started this podcast in March of this year. 
Um, and um, the purpose of it is to inspire, to educate, um, to bring awareness and um, and and just, you know, be able to have these kind of discussions in our community. Um, particularly, I am dedicated. Ded- I've dedicated this podcast work to women of color um, to educate our community and to um help change the narrative, if you will, for women of color. You and I both know um, that um, in our community, uh, many of the diseases that we deal with um, as women, African-American women, particularly women of color, um, tend to have higher rates of certain diseases in our community, whether it's certain cancers, diabetes, health issues, uh, heart issues. And so I just believe that that doesn't have to be our narrative and that I think with, with awareness and support, um, inspiration and um, just the kind of things that you and I bring to the community can help change the narrative for women of color. And so I just want to jump in. I really want to know um, uh, from you, before we get into some of the technical stuff about breast cancer, I just want you to share a little bit about um, what inspired you to, to go into this work, um, Dr. Spencer. You're doing some amazing things. And I've looked at your website and followed some of the things you're doing, and it's just some amazing work that you're doing. So I want you to share a little bit about um, what you um, what inspired you to go into breast health in your medical work? I'm so glad you asked that question. Um, what inspired me to go into breast surgery was after training at Grady Hospital in Atlanta. It's a level one trauma center. I, I felt like I was a really good trauma surgeon, got an opportunity to learn a lot while saving many lives, but I never had the opportunity to develop relationships with those patients. Once I got into my breast surgical clinic at Grady, I had the opportunity to have relationships as I went through the journey with these women from diagnosis to surgery to their uh, ongoing treatment and their surveillance. And so it was just the idea of making that connection with patients on a level beyond my scalpel, if you will. Uh uh, I was very fortunate to meet a very young lady that was diagnosed with breast cancer. She was in her mid-20s at the time. She was just a few years younger than me. And I, um, she said to me, everyone in my family has died from breast cancer, including my mom when I was 10 years old. And she just seemed like she was so hopeless and so helpless. And from that moment on, I made not only a professional commitment, but a personal commitment that this patient would not die on my watch. And with my best efforts, with a really good team and establishing a rapport with her, and that's very important in terms of this breast cancer journey, you want to make sure your team is rolling in the same direction as a good cultural fit. Mm -hmm. fit. And we got through it. And um, it's been over a decade, and she's not only surviving, but thriving. She's a breast cancer advocate, uh, not just in Atlanta, but nationally. And so she definitely inspired me and continues to inspire me and many women like her to this day. So, wow, wow. Yeah, and I, I thought I thought that would be a good way to lead into our conversation because it's always I'm always interested in why um we go into the vocations that we go into what inspires us and I believe that um um, things that inspire us or motivate us makes a difference in how we do our work. Oh, and, absolutely. Uh, and so that's why I wanted to know. And it sounds like to me, some of the things I heard jump um, that you said were the idea of relationship, team and support. And I can't tell you how many times I've heard that those three words as relates to breast cancer, mm-hmm. relationships teens and support and how important those three elements are to women who are dealing with breast cancer or any kind of really any disease, but particularly breast cancer and how it has helped women um, to survive and to overcome. And then many of them go on to be advocates for breast cancer uh, research and awareness um, and supporting other women coming through on the other side. I think that's, that's just amazing. And I love that. And the thing is relationships, Dr. Alvarado can be life changing. And when it comes Mm -hmm. to health, let me, let me share with you why every week I have a patient that comes in for a second or third opinion with advanced breast cancer. I mean, this is a woman oftentimes have had breast cancer for years. And of course, in the back of my mind, I'm wondering what was the delay in treatment? Like what, uh, 
cause you to not move forward with your treatment. And 90% of them will say they had a bad experience at their first um, interface in the health community. So they've had a bad experience where they feel like they, the communication wasn't there, the support wasn't there, the customer service wasn't there. And they feel like they might as well just do nothing or go at it alone, but you can't necessarily treat yourself. And wow. so you can give yourself supportive care, but you need the help of professionals. But it's very incumbent upon us as healthcare providers to try to remember not only do you need to be competent and share the plan, but you've got to have customer service and you've got to have compassion. And those are the three C's of my practice and my organization at uh, Dr. Francis Lowbrook South and Wellness Center is competency, customer service, and compassion. And I put customer service in the center of that because we have to remind ourselves that patients are customers and we have to service them. And I always encourage women when you come to see me or someone else, always, if you don't feel like you're going the right direction, seek a second opinion or a third opinion. You do it till you get it right. But the journey is too important to not have that relationship. Wow. Okay. I like that. Those three C's, competency, customer service, and compassion. I love, I, I love that. I love that. Yeah. So talk to us about, you were talking about the woman that you, you said you see women coming in all the time with advanced breast cancer. And um, so can you talk to us about what are some of the common symptoms of breast cancer, how it can be detected, diagnosed? What are some, what should we be looking for? Yeah, that's a great question. So usually when someone ask themselves like what are the symptoms of breast cancer like for you what comes to mind you think of a, a symptom i think of the first thing is a lump absolutely mm-hmm. and so a lot of women that's what they think of however i submit to you there can be so many warning signs that does not include a lump so okay. we used to um, recommend that women do their monthly breast self exam and mm-hmm. we don't discourage women from doing it but what we have found is it's a better approach to say, if you see something, say something, because it's not always what you feel. You could see nipple discharge. That could be a sign. You could see skin changes like redness or darkening or thickening of the skin. That is a sign. A okay. underneath the armpit, that is a sign. And so oftentimes, if a woman doesn't have a lump, they try to undo the symptom in their mind. So they say, oh, you know, my breast is itching. I have my nipples are itching because that could be a sign as well. Well, my skin is changing. I said, oh, maybe it was a rash or a bug bite. It's not a lump, so I don't need to worry. And I encourage women in terms of the signs and symptoms. If you see something, say something. Go to your healthcare provider, whether it's your primary care, your breast surgeon, your family doctor, your OGYN, and have your breast examined yearly. um, But if you just think about just feeling for a lump, you could miss a lot of critical signs of breast cancer. And that's why mammograms are so important. Because wow. Sometimes we'll catch things before they develop into a lot. So we catch them pretty early. Wow. You know, I, you know, it's amazing when you were saying, if you see something, say something. One of the um, one of the um, survivors that we had on this this month said that her, what she noticed was her. She had an inverted nipple. Uh huh. And that definitely can be a sign. And so when she when she mentioned it to someone and they said, you need to go get that checked out. And that's how she found another one. She said it was, she just felt something. She just happened to go across herself Mm -hmm. casually and felt something. So it's different for every woman, correct? It can be. And let me just explain something with the nipple. Um, Dr. G, sometimes the lump can be behind the nipple and because it's behind the nipple, you don't feel the lump. But the sign is as the lump grows, it pulls the nipple inward. So the lump is behind it. And as it's growing, it, it pulls it inward. And so that's why one doesn't feel the lump. It just knows the nipple inverted. And even itchiness of the nipple can be a sign of breast cancer as well. Skin changes, like the survivor saying she just went across her breast and just felt that it just didn't feel right. So a lot of women, you have to listen to your bodies. Don't talk yourself out of things. Sometimes people be so busy that oh. we'll, I'll check on it later or maybe it's just a rash. But if that was our child, if that was our friend, our loved one, we would be uh, right there with them at the doctor's office making the appointment. But when it comes to ourselves, oftentimes we don't put ourselves on our to-do list. So oh, we got to on my street. <laughs> yes. So part of yeah. the is following up. Uh, so wait a minute. You, you're going a little fast. I got to stop you a little bit here. So 
And that's that you're going down my street now, um, Dr. April. You're really going down my street because that's why I titled this 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 um, episode self-care and breast health. Because and, you, and when, you, when you were talking earlier about if you see something, say something about the rashes and things like that, you'd be surprised the number of women that don't even look at themselves in the mirror, don't take the time to stand in the mirror and look at their breasts or look at their body, see any changes, feel anything. And then you're right. The whole idea of self-care, not paying attention to our bodies, not listening to our bodies or talking ourselves out of what we see or what we feel and, and saying we don't really have time. I've had women that say they don't have time to go get their annual mammogram. And I'm just like, what do you mean? How is it that you haven't, you don't take the time? So why do you think we do that? Why do you think we overlook ourselves when it comes to these things? You know, I always, <laughs> if Jesus were a woman, there would not be 12 disciples. We try to do it all. <laughs> but we do it all for other people and not ourselves. You said if Jesus were, was a woman, there wouldn't be twelve to say because you know we gonna hold up the universe, right? Sure, we try to be the the end all. We try to be everything for everyone, and we will, you know, add a detriment to our to ourselves. And so I think a lot of women don't follow up because oftentimes we're too busy attending to the needs of other people. We have so many entities grabbing at us from our families, our uh, partners, our jobs, our you know our careers, our businesses, et cetera. And so we're always like, you know, we can always do this later. And um, sometimes later never comes. So it's important that we put put you on your calendar. And that's a big part of self-care. Put you on your calendar. You know, I believe in that. Put you <laughs> on your calendar. Yes. And that includes your exams, all of your exams, not just your breast exam, all of your, all of your annual things. You know, um, back in July, I had my, I had my, physical, my annual physical um, in June, which is, you know, close to my birthday. My birthday is in May, but I always, you know, have my annual physical somewhere between May and June. And um, and then in July, I had to see my, um, I, ha- I had to go see my endocrinologist. I had to see, um, I had a little thing going on earlier this year with my heart. And so my, my, my primary doctor wanted me to just check it out. I was having like a little rapid heart rate. Mm-hmm. And um, so she was following that and she wanted me to see a cardiologist. Never saw a cardiologist ever before in my life. So yeah. I went to, see, went, went to see a cardiologist and mm-hmm. I looked at my schedule in July and it was, I said, oh Lord, I, I, I just felt, I was like, Jesus, I got so many doctor's appointments. Thank God everything checked out fine. I'm good. But when I looked at my schedule, I said, Lord <laughs> Jesus, I my schedule look like like somebody you know that's really really going through but it was really just stuff that I needed to check up on thanks be to God everything checked out fine I had my first stress test ever okay and when I went back this week checked on that they said I was in top condition but the thing is I had to check up on it I had to follow up you did it in the middle of a pandemic so kudos yes. to you. You did not let anything stop you from taking care of yourself. Yes. And you know, and when the thing when the incident happened in February with my heart rate, mm-hmm. I ended, ended up in the emergency room for it. And my uh, primary doctor wanted me to go to follow up with a cardiologist right away. Well, you know, we that was right at the top of the pandemic, and they weren't seeing patients. So, right. but I, but but I as soon as they opened back up. I was on the calendar. I actually saw the cardiologist for the first time in June and then just followed up with her just this past week. Um, and in between there, she ordered a stress test, which I came past with flying colors. But the thing is, you're right. Even in this pandemic, um, when I saw my endocrinologist, I had to see her via um, telemed, but I made sure that I did it. You know, and so that's the point. We got to take care of ourselves and we have to put ourselves on our calendar. That's that's just good. Can you talk to us about um, as particularly as relates to women of color, Mm -hmm. African-American women? What are breast cancers that are that particularly impact women of color? How does breast cancer affect us, communities of color? Sure. So breast cancer affects communities of color, particularly African-American women, in a very unique way. Number one, stage for stage, we usually 
have a higher mortality rate, meaning we die at a higher rate than any other demographic. Okay. Uh, the thing is we oftentimes are diagnosed at a later stage. And uh, we more commonly have a subtype called triple negative breast cancer. It's seen more commonly in African-Americans and Hispanic women compared to non-Hispanic and non-African-American women. And that subtype can sometimes be more challenging to treat. And um, lastly, young women, meaning African-American women under the age of 45 is where we see the highest incidence. And incidence is the number of new cases. And that is an alarming statistic for me as a surgeon to really dive into why are we seeing women that are under the age of 45 having the highest rate of new cases of breast cancer. Whereas in women over this age group of all races, African-American women, it's starting to level off a bit and even the mortality is improving. But um, but for us, we are starting to see a shift um, for young African-American women being diagnosed with breast cancer at a higher rate than any other group. Wow. And well, is there is there something that we as a community can do about that? I think so. I mean, we don't have all the answers. We're definitely moving in the right direction in terms of research and um, race awareness. As a community, it's really important that we, number one, mm-hmm. engage, participate in clinical trial. I know from a historical standpoint, we haven't had the best relationship with the medical community um, beyond just the Tuskegee experiment. But for many of us, we have a general distrust uh, of the healthcare community. So you need to align yourself with a healthcare provider that you uh, respect and trust and get enrolled in clinical trials where it's appropriate so we can get more information on the biology of breast cancers in African-American women. The other thing that we can do is to make sure that we do things to lower our risk. And I call those the ABCs of breast cancer prevention. And the A is just awareness. You and I have spoken about this very early on. And the awareness is just being aware of your anatomy. If you see something, say something. Uh, we spoke about being aware of the uh, screening. Make sure you get your screening mammograms starting at age 40. And more importantly, being aware of how vital it is to follow up. You know, making time for self-care. When you do get that screening mammogram, if you get a call back, go back. And so those are the things you need to be aware of. In terms of the B is behavior. Sometimes it's the most challenging. Things we can do to lower our risk, exercise more. And there's lots of data to show that inactivity can increase your risk of breast cancer. So what does that mean? Like I despise the gym. I don't like going to the gym, but I know I have to stay physically active. So 30 minutes of the heart um, increase of your heart, which you had <laughs> unintentionally tachycardia, had an elevated heart rate, but under controlled settings, the elevated heart rate is good. And so 30 <laughs> minutes of Dr. G, this can be walking, this could be dancing, this could be sex, this could be running errands about the day. So you don't necessarily have to be, have your routine relegated to a gym as long as you are moving. Of, and having that heart rate increase to 30 minutes a day. And then C is just being mindful of your consumer choices. You know, be mindful of what you're eating, what you're putting inside your body and on your bodies. You know, our biggest organ is our skin. So look for carcinogens in your products. And then in terms of your culinary choices, just be mindful of just trying to eat more fresh fruits and vegetables, staying away from saturated fats and processed foods because you want things to build your immune system. Because every time you sit down, you're either feeding disease or fighting disease. So you have to be very deliberate on um, what you're putting inside and outside your bodies. I hope that was helpful. So that's what we can do, you know, to lower to lower our risk. Um, one of the things that I have found really helpful in engaging the community is just being more involved in your civic organizations, and a lot of that happens in the church, the community. There's Susan G. Komen, I sat on the um, board for the Atlanta chapter for many years. They are um, organizations, the American Cancer Society, you can go out and do your walks. And all those things are helpful in raising awareness, but we as a community have to go from awareness to action. And that's why I really want to emphasize the ABCs, uh, being aware, being mindful of your behavior, and also being um, very deliberate in your consumer choices.
Now, one of the things um, that I think we don't speak enough about, this is um, uh, Mental Health Day, October 10th. So I think it's very fitting that we have this conversation about patients and women's lifestyle and self-care is making sure that we are in check with our psychosocial wellness and not just our physical wellness. So if you're feeling depressed, anxious, make sure you say something. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm COVID negative. <laughs> it's like you can't sneeze or cough without someone looking at you like, uh, has she been exposed? Um, but uh, making sure seriously that we get our um, mental health in uh, tact. See a professional, chat with trusted uh, friend or loved one, but certainly seek the help of a professional if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you have an anxiety, difficulty sleeping, um, depression, uh, undiagnosed or undertreated uh, bipolar. All those things are critical to our physical well being as well. You were sharing about what we can do as um, we were, you were talking about the different things that African-American women, the different cancers that African-American women have to be concerned about. And then you were going down the road of talking about the importance of exercise and things of that nature. So if you can pick back up there. Oh, yes, absolutely. You know, Dr. Alvarado, I'm so glad to ask that question of what can African-American women do know that we are at an elevated risk to lower our risk for breast cancer. A big part of that is what you've been communicating through your amazing podcast on self-care. And that's the ABCs of breast cancer prevention. Um, the A is for awareness. So just being aware of your body. If you see something, say something. Mm -hmm. Be aware of uh, the importance of screening. Make sure you get your screening mammogram once a year starting at 40. And more importantly, if you get a call back, go back. A lot of uh, African-American women were so busy not doing our self-care. And you got mm -hmm. such an amazing workup in the middle of a pandemic. So there's no excuse, ladies. You've got to make sure that you go back because it could be something that needs to be looked into a little bit further. You may need a biopsy or surgery or medical management. But if you never go back, your disease can progress unchecked. And that can be extremely problematic in terms of increasing our death rate, our survival, and how well we do with um, breast cancer. Uh, the B is behavior. And okay. so mindful of exercising, you know, mm. show just 30 minutes a day of elevation of a heart, heart rate. <laughs> and I'll say, yes, you had an elevated heart rate. It wasn't on purpose. So if you're mm. just resting, that's problematic. But elevated heart rate for 30 minutes. And again, you don't have to be in a gym. I despise gyms. I, it's so hard for me to go. So I spend a lot of outdoor time. So I'm very active and that's my physical activity. And so it could be dancing, walking, sex. <laughs> and so, um, and lastly, in terms of behavior, just uh, the last is C, which is our consumer choices, you know, 85% of our immune system is in our gut and we are what we eat. Every time you sit down to eat, either mm -hmm. feed or fighting disease, so be mindful of fresh fruits and vegetable intake, reducing um, your intake of processed foods and sugars and saturated fats. Yeah. And all patients add stuff. I never say you can't have that, but you can add more to your palate that's healthier. And right. then choices. Be mindful of what you're putting, not just in your body, like food, but also on your body. You know, 85% of, uh, you know, our skin is our largest organ. And so right. Right. What you're on your skin, um, right. that's the things that inspired my makeup and skincare line. I don't think we talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I was going to ask you about that. You have a makeup line, Taylor May Cosmetics. I do. And I'm wearing it today, but it's named after my daughter, Taylor, but inspired by my patients to come up with a safe, sexy, simple makeup and skincare line for men and women. Okay. And, and uh, the main thing is just to make sure that we're mindful of what we're putting, you know, on, on our skin. And that includes our makeup. And for a lot of women, they felt less than themselves after diagnosis of breast cancer. They didn't feel as sexy. They felt like they weren't as beautiful. And I always say that, it, you know, when a woman mentions to me, she says, is that vain? And I said, no, it's not about vanity, it's about sanity. Because the bottom line is you look good, you feel good. You feel better. Right, and right, right. Feel better. So that's a little part of that. Uh, but it's, it's, it can be found at tailormadecosmetics.online. 
and I created a coupon code just for you. So oh, okay. In. <laughs> okay, so what is my coupon code? Hey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but if you want it to be something else, we can switch that up in seconds. Okay. But I got it. And Tony G, they'll get 20% off their entire order, not just in the month of October, but for the remaining of the the right re- remainder of the year with the 20 G uh, uh Tony G uh, coupon code. So T O N I G is a 20% off coupon code for your cosmetic line. And any of body that's listening to my podcast today mm-hmm. or watching my podcast within the first 30 days of the, of the date that this airs, which is October uh, 26, then um, they will be able to get 20% off. I'm I'm going definitely. I'm <laughs> definitely going. And I'm going to encourage the ladies in our self-care network. Tailor-made cosmetics.online. Tailor-made cosmetics dot online. I got it there on the screen. And for those that are listening, it's Taylor May, T-A-Y-L-O-R, Made, M-A-D-E, Cosmetics dot online. Thank you so much, Dr. Spencer. I know your time is um is really valuable. All of our time is, and I know you're very busy. And it was just, I'm, I'm just grateful that we had this time together this afternoon to talk about breast health and self-care. I'm grateful that you were able to come on. I'll have to bring you back maybe to talk to the women. Um, you know, this is the podcast, but we also have our, um, we have our um, um, Harmonize Your Life Women's Self-Care Network. And um, that's um, the women that follow, that are part of my network. We do some extra work with them. The podcast is open to any woman that um, that wants to listen or anyone. It's open. It's open to the public for, for listening and watching. But then the Harmonize Your Life Self-Care Network mm-hmm. are the group of women who I do some special work with around mm-hmm. self-care. We have a monthly meeting called Tea Time with Dr. Tony. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so we have a monthly meeting called Tea Time with Dr. Tony. And um, maybe you could come in in that setting and maybe even show the, show us how to do some breast um, technique, you know, just and how to check check on ourselves and things of that nature where it's a little bit more private and um, we, we can, you know, you can really do some demonstrations with I us. I would love that. I would love that. And what we talked about the, today regarding the ABCs of breast cancer prevention, you know, going from your breast health to your best health is a book that will be released October 2021. So I'll definitely make sure you have a copy and also have oh, a copy yeah. the way to your um, to your followers and so we'll continue the conversation because breast cancer, although we highlighted in October, those that are going through the journey, it is a year, a year round process. And so yeah. we we'll really support these ladies and give them encouragement on how to um, engage in self-care so that we're not having a conversation about cancer. It starts with self-care. So you are helping to save lives. And I appreciate you. Thank for that. you. Thank you. That's that's our goal. We are so grateful. I'm going to I'm I know you have to run so I'm gonna, I'm going to let you go. I just appreciate you. I'm glad for the connection and I believe this is a new relationship, a new sisterhood that's forming here between us. Uh, we have a lot of the same uh, passion for self-care and for wellness. I saw that you have a wellness retreat. I have a self-care retreat so it's very similar to what you're doing. So I need to bring you in on that as well and let you talk to the women that come to the retreat and just you know i believe that you know we got to do this together it's going to take our whole community um to attack this 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 disease in our community to bring awareness and to change the um the narrative for women of color so again i thank you thank you thank you for your time and look forward to more conversations and more work working together to eradicate so hopefully we won't have uh, um, these too many conversations about breast cancer but we'll just have conversations about good healthy ways to take care of ourselves and to help hold one another accountable for self-care I love that thank you thank you thank you thank you all for joining us today we are so glad that you were able to join us on the harmonize your life uh, conversations on self-care for women of color podcast with your host dr tony g alvarado i pray that something was said or done on today that would help you in your journey toward self-care 
We want you to tune in to us, stay connected to us, and stay uh, connected to what God is doing through this self-care network. You can find out about us on my website at Dr. Tony G. Alvarado, uh, at drtonyalvarado.com. You can follow the self-care network there. You can follow the podcast there. You can follow, figure out all the stuff that we're doing to help women and men in our community to, to stay healthy. Continue to take care of yourself, women. Remember, Breast Cancer Awareness Month is just in the month of October, but we have to take care of ourselves every day of our lives. So please remember to do your breast health checks. Remember to have a community. You heard Dr. Spencer say we need a community for relationships, for accountability. Follow Dr. Spencer. Uh, listen, you. She has a uh, her um, her uh, practice is right here in Georgia. Follow her. Come because I believe that you'll be able to. She she believes in customers competency, customer service, and compassion. Thank, thank you. you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that's uh, Dr. April Spencer on Instagram. It's just and my name. So Dr. April Spencer. April Spencer on Instagram. You can follow yeah. her there on IG at Dr. April Spencer. Let me put that up, Doc. I'm going to put that up. I'm going to put that up because I had it. April had it written out. April mm. Spencer. I got you. Let's see here. There you go. At Dr. April Spencer and I got at TaylorMade.Cosmetics. Yeah. I do. Thank yep, you. I got both those. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So y'all follow her online. Go to her website. Her websites are here. You see that? You can follow her. Get in her practice. Do um so they can call you for consultations, Doc. Absolutely. They just dial um, 678-210-2846. Uh, okay. Our uh, patient line, and so we'll we'll get them on board. And we're just excited to have um, your team extended to our care team, and uh, we help save lives together. But it starts with self care and harmonizing your life. So thank you so much for helping me save lives. I can't do it without you. So oh, and I can't do it without you. Listen, I'm a pastor. That's my principal work. I'm a pastor. And one of the worst, one of one of the jobs of a pastor that is not what we like to do mm -hmm. is burying people. Yeah. I don't like doing eulogies. I love to preach, but I don't like doing eulogies. Yeah. And I've had to stand over many families mm -hmm. and have to walk with many families through not just breast cancer, but other diseases. Sure. And I would rather dance at your birthday party than to preach your eulogy. And so I just I just thank you for we're working together. We're saving lives together. And that's what it's all about. Thank you all for joining us today. And we hope to see you again on Harmonize on the Harmonize Your Life Conversations on Self-Care for Women of Color podcast. See you soon. Hi, this is Dr. Tony Alvarado. I am so delighted about bringing the Harmonize Your Life podcast to you. Would you do me a favor? If you are enjoying this, this podcast, would you email me at hello at drtonyalvarado.com? I want to hear from you. I want your feedback. I want to know if there are any other topics that you are interested in as it relates to wellness, self-care, nutrition, or just overall bringing harmony into your life. Email me, contact me at hello at drtonyalvarado.com.